This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. This episode of SketchUp a 3D Toolbox is brought to you by 3D Connection, makers of the Space Navigator. To learn more about them, visit their website at www.3dconnection.com. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode number 23. Now, today we're going to be talking about a really interesting feature in SketchUp, multiplying and dividing. Now, no, this doesn't mean using SketchUp as a calculator. This is actually a way of copying an object, but copying it evenly over an entire space. Let me show you what I mean by that. So this is what I have in my project for this particular episode, and as you can see, it's just a very simple uh, slab. Uh, I'm going to be calling this the floor, actually. And it's just 4 feet wide and 16 feet long. And this is what we're going to uh, model some railing on. We're actually going to make a railing on one side of this slab. Now, the reason we're going to be doing railing is because with a railing, you need to have basically some poles, small poles, sticking out of the side right here and you need a lot of them so typically a railing would have you know those poles spaced maybe every six or nine inches or something like that so over 16 feet you're gonna have a lot of those now I'll show you uh, a typical way you would do it the first thing you need to do regardless of whether you use do it manually or use the uh, multiply and divide features is you just need to model whatever it is you're going to uh, make copies of so I'll just use the rectangle tool here and I want to point out I have grouped my floor here. That's very important because I want to be able to move my posts that I do on top of this independently of the floor. And if the floor is grouped, they're not going to stick like usual. So I can just use the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw just a one inch square. So I'll just type in one comma one. Now give me a one inch square. And then I'm going to use the push pull tool and pull it up maybe, oh, let's say three feet three apostrophe and enter and now I've got a three foot tall one inch square uh, rod sticking straight up out of the floor now typically what you would do is you would select this and then use the move tool hit M for the move tool hit the option key to make it the copy tool and then just click and drag this out nine inches like that so there we have the beginnings of a railing but you can see that this is going to take a while and this is only 16 feet some railings are going to be much longer than that and it's going to get really annoying and really old really quickly so I'm going to show you how the multiply and divide tools can really help you with this um, and you'll wanna they're very similar in the way they work and what they do but depending on whether you're doing a railing or something else you'll, you'll wanna pick which one will work best for you so first step is of course model the object you want to uh, duplicate so the next step is and this is optional but I really like to group my object first so I'll select it all and then right click and say mate group that just kinda makes it easier to keep track of things and then the next thing you want to do is you want to just like we did manually we're gonna hit we're gonna select it first and then we're going to hit the M key for the move tool and then option to make it the copy tool and I'm gonna grab it by this corner here hit the right arrow key to lock it to the red axis so I can move my cursor wherever I want but it stays on the red axis type in 9 for 9 inches enter now this is where the difference is this is crucial do not deselect that copy that you made do not do anything else because this is the only time that the uh, multiply and divide tools will work otherwise you're going to have to redo your copy so don't deselect don't do anything and then the next step is actually there's no tool for this there's no tool there's no menu bar command it's all done with the keyboard it's kind of almost a hidden feature actually but it works really well to multiply which is what I'm going to show you now to multiply you type in on your keyboard either the X key so the, like a big times sign, a multiply sign, an X, or you can also use uh, the asterisks 
on your key, on your uh, number pad, uh, just like if you were typing onto a uh, a computer's calculator. Uh, you want to do a time symbol. You do either X or asterisk. And uh, personally, I like to use uh, the asterisk key. You might also think of it as the star key. That's how I thought of it for a long time, mostly because it's really hard to say asterisks. But uh, just do star or X. And then you'll notice that uh, in our dimensions box, which is still says length from when we were doing our copy, but it now says star or asterisks. So now it's basically looking and it knows, okay, we are now in multiply mode. The next thing to do is say how many copies of this thing you want. So how many times you want to multiply it. So in this case, I'm going to multiply it by five. So I'll type in five and then I'll hit enter. And you see what it just did? This is so cool because it has just made copies of these things and they are spaced nine inches apart. It basically takes whatever movement you did with your first copy. So like I, this was my original poll right here. I copied it over nine inches this way and then I said times that by five. So it made five versions of that that are spaced the same amount apart. Now this is a little bit confusing because while this feature is great, this is one thing that I find a, I've always found a little bit odd that it works this way is that you'll notice we had our first original then we had our second copy, and then I said times that by five. You would think that it would make five more copies, but it only made four. It makes one less. It's like you have to include, you have to count the original in that multiply. So it did create five, it kept the first one, and then it added four more to make it five. So just kind of think about that. The way I think of it, it should really be you times it by five, you get five more. But if you think, okay, well I need three more here, just type in times uh, four, and it'll give you three more. Um, so that's a little bit confusing, but once you get your mind wrapped around that, that it actually works really nicely. Now, in this case, obviously, I don't have enough of these poles to make it all the way down. T timesing it by five didn't do quite enough. Now, you might think, well, now you've got to redo it. You've got to delete those old ones and make another copy, or just you know start copying again. Well, that's not the case. As long as I don't do anything else. I don't switch tools. I don't select anything else. I don't do anything. I've just finished doing my multiply. It's actually still waiting for a multiply command. So let's say I wanted one more of these. Instead of times five, I can just type in again times six and hit enter and it gives me one more. It doesn't keep multiplying. It's like saying times six didn't give me six more copies. It just made it so that it times it again. But added one more in that case. Now in this case I can just uh, keep going, I'll just go times 12. We're getting there. You can still move around in your model uh, without you know messing up the multiply thing so you can see where you're going. But we're gonna need more than 12, let's do times 20. Getting there, it looks like we need just one more. So I'll do times 21. Perfect, look at that. That's excellent. And really, it only took me seconds, whereas before it would have taken me you know, several minutes to make all of these copies. And then, of course, you know, the next thing to do is uh, add the railing on the top, which for that I'm actually just going to uh, grab my floor, make a copy of it, lock it to the blue axis, set it right on top of those, and then I'll just double click to edit the group and then I'll use the push-pull tool to push it back like that and now I have a very very simple railing so that is the way you multiply things and it you can see it works really really well but there's also divide and I'll show you that next but first I want to thank the people who make this show possible 3D connection. Now, as I'm sure you know by now, these guys make the Space Navigator, which is so awesome. It's like a joystick almost for SketchUp. It allows you to navigate without switching tools, without using, you know, mouse buttons and hotkeys and all that stuff. It just works. It's so intuitive and easy to use, and it's actually really great because not only does it have zero learning curve for you, it has zero learning curve for anyone else. Say you have you know, a friend that you're modeling something for and he wants to take a look in, at the model and see how you're doing, you can just sit him down, he can use the Space Navigator, no problem. It's just so intuitive. Now, 
Not only do they have the standard space navigator, they even have a version for notebooks, which is a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, and comes with its own carrying case if you're the kind of guy who models things on the go. Say you go to someone's house and start modeling their living room for them. You can take just your laptop and your space navigator and start entering in the SketchUp dimensions right then and there. They are absolutely fantastic. Be sure to check them out at their website, which is www.3dconnection.com. I want to thank them so much for their support of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. So I just showed you how to use the multiply feature, but there's also the divide feature, which is really, really cool, and I actually use that one a ton as well. So I'm just going to select these things that I made and uh, delete them. Actually, I'm only going to select these guys. I'll leave my first one so that we can work with him. So if if I know exactly how far apart I want my object, so I, I know I want these posts, you know, n I want them exactly nine inches apart and just duplicate that until you get to the end over here. That's a good place where you can use the multiply tool. But if you don't know how far apart you want your objects, you only know how many of them you want, then the divide tool is the tool for you. So what I do for that is same thing as the multiply tool where you model whatever it is you want to divide, group it in my case, that's optional, but I really like to group things. Select that. And then the next step is also to select it, switch to the move tool, option key to make it the copy tool, and then copy it. But instead of moving it just nine inches down, I'm going to go ahead and lock it into the red axis again, you move it down to the other end. So Think of this as like a starting point and an end point. You've got your starting point right here. This is where you want your railing to start. And then just move this down to the end point where you want it to end. So we'll put it right there. Now again, just like the multiply tool, you need to make sure you don't do anything else. Don't deselect, don't switch tools, don't do anything. The very next thing you want to do is use uh, the, the, div the divide key which uh, it, on your keyboard, it's the slash key. Uh, and it's just like a, that's the same key that they use for divide on computer calculators as well. So it's very intuitive. So, and again, in your length box, watch out for when you hit slash, you see slash, and then divide by, and then whatever, however many you want to, you know, have this divided by. So if I were to say, for example, uh, let's try, I think I did, something like 20 last time. Let's try 15. Let's see what 15 looks like. Divide by 15. It divides up the space in between your starting point and your end point perfectly. These things are all evenly spaced, not nine inches, but they're perfectly evenly spaced all the way down. And this is really cool. Now, just like the multiply tool, you can continue to tweak this. Say, oh, 15, they're a little bit far apart. Let's do divide by 20. Boom, there we go. That's looking a little bit better. And you can do, you know, say divide by 40 and get even more of them. Now, just like the multiply tool, I'll show you, let me show you something. If I were to, let's just do a smaller number. I'll say divide by four. You'll notice that just like the multiply tool, it doesn't give us four of these poles in between our start and our end point. It only gives us three because it counts the end point in that divide by thing. So if I just say divide by one, nothing happens. If I say divide by two, I get one in the center. So that's the way that works. Figure out how many you want in between, and then just add one. So I'm just gonna go, let's say divide by 18. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'll just do the same thing that I did last time. I'll just grab a copy of my floor, move it up and set it right down on top there. Move into here and push these back. Done. Now, this is such a time saver. I mean, you will find instances, I mean, railings, that's kind of an obvious example, but say, for example, you know, you're doing a fence and you had all these slats that you were trying to make, just duplicate them across. Uh, another great example is, uh, keep in mind that this is not limited to just one axis, one dimension. It's not like you just say, okay, move this to the left and then multiply, or move this to the right and then multiply, or move it up or down and then multiply. You can actually do a thing. Let me show you one last trick here. You can actually do a thing where if I delete these guys here, I could select this pole, 
make a copy of it, and put this copy up and to the left like that, right? So it's both to the left and up. Then I just say, you know, times five, same thing. It basically just takes whatever whatever transformation you did to the original and just does it again. Just keeps duplicating it. So I mean, you could do a thing where you move something in one move. You have to do it, you can't do it in multiple moves. You have to do it in one swift motion. Uh, otherwise, it'll just do whatever the last movement you did was. So you can't just say like, you know, okay, move this to the left and then up and then to the right. It needs to be all in one movement, but if you do that, then it'll just multiply it all the way. And this would be a perfect thing to do on a stair railing. This would be perfect for that. So it's a really, really nifty feature. Well, the multiply and divide tools really are very powerful in SketchUp. And you can see that, you know, particularly when you're dealing with a large amount of things. I mean, we were only working with 20 at the most today, but imagine if you have hundreds of them. You can see how it's really going to pay off. Now, until next time, be sure to visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. We've got the show notes, lesson files, all kinds of great stuff for you on there. And if you have any questions or comments for me or any suggestions for future episodes, send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling. Good modeling.